Hey, it's Doris with Ollie Books, and I'm here with a currently reading, and yes, I am reading. Oh my gosh, I flipped the calendar from March to April, and all of a sudden, my reading mojo was back. I've gone from wanting to focus on one book at a time to reading six at a time. I feel like myself again. <laughs> so. I'm going to start with um, my first two Australian reads um, in the in the spirit of Aussie April. I'm going to start with those two if you're here for the Australian spin on things. And then I have a couple books um, that I finished up in March that I still need to talk about. And then... Um, I'm going to talk about the other five books that I'm also currently reading on top of the Australian one. So, yeah. And I do still need to do my Book 2 Prize Octafinals Rankings wrap up. Um, but I wasn't in that mood today. So, that will go up on Tuesday, I think. Because um, I'm doing Yoda. I made that up. <laughs> YouTube on odd days in April. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, anyway, on to the books. So, the first book I finished in April and my first Aussie April read is Mullumbimby by Melissa Lukashenko. This came highly recommended by Natalie from um, my reading days. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's a lot of reading in book two. And um, Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me. This is um, a modern day love story, but um, there's a lot more than just the love story. It's um, the story of a woman, um, an indigenous woman in Australia, and she has she's she's divorced, freshly divorced, a couple years and has taken her 15 year old daughter and bought a piece of land in the country and is um, raising horses. And yeah, I'm here for that. Um, she does meet a guy, but that's not entirely the center of the story. It's more about um, getting back to nature and back to her heritage. And there's a little bit of spiritualism in it. Um, and I learned a lot about um, the indigenous peoples in modern times and their fight to reclaim the land. Um, yeah, super interesting. I really liked the beginning and I really liked the end. The middle, I wasn't quite sure of the relationship, um, but the way she wrapped it up totally made sense to me. And there were a couple plot twists I didn't see coming, so really really enjoyed this and my Aussie April is off to a great start. Next up for Aussie April is Foreign Soil and Other Stories by Maxine Beneva Clark. This is another one that I saw um, making the rounds seems like a couple years ago now. This is a short story collection from Australia and yeah I think this one focuses um more on immigrant storylines, which I'm always here for that. So looking forward to diving into my first short story today after I catch up on a couple more buddy reads. So um, the two I finished in March that I wanna talk about today are Shark Drunk and Hollow Kingdom. Um, Shark Drunk I plowed through the last week of March, I believe, and this one took me the whole month but I enjoyed them both. So Hollow Kingdom is crazy. <laughs> this is a zombie apocalypse novel um, set in Seattle, told from the perspective of shit turd, a domesticated crow. Um, you also have, oh gosh, what was his dog's name? Dennis. The Bloodhound is his faithful companion. They've lost their human, Big Jim, to the, the zombie virus. Um, there's a really wise octopus. <laughs> it's, it's zany. It is so zany. 
the first half of this book, the first third of this book, I would say, I laughed like every other page. I was laughing out loud. I have a rather obnoxious junior high sense of humor. So all of all of the body humor and the bad words and yeah, the play on words really, really worked for me, but it's not for everybody. So if you don't like it in the first couple of pages, I would say close it up and send it back to the library. But I laughed and laughed and laughed. I'm not even kidding. Um, it lost its way for me somewhat in the middle. It just kept meandering. Um, but then I really did like the way, um, she tied it up in the end. So really fun read for me. And yes. And then, uh, Shark Drunk, The Art of Catching a Large Shark from a Tiny Rubber Dinghy in a Big Ocean by Morton Stroxness. I will say that the title of this is somewhat misleading. I thought I thought there was going to be drinking on this boat. <laughs> um, thank goodness there wasn't because catching a really big shark in a little rubber dinghy, probably beer is not a good idea to add to that. Um, the shark drunk comes from the fact that um, the Greenland shark that they were hunting for, its flesh can induce inebriation to the extreme. So there's that. Um, this book really, really enjoyed the writing here. It reminded me of um, Underland, that style of writing. Um, but instead of individual chapters, it kind of flowed, flowed on itself, the whole book. Um, so they weren't individual stories. It was just kind of a continuous, not a stream of consciousness writing, but stream of consciousness thoughts in that he would hop from one topic to another as his mind led him that way. Um, it's set in Norway and you get a lot of just different natural sciences and um, history and sociology of the community and yeah it, it, and it, it is two guys um, in a rubber dinghy in the ocean for a lot of it but I, I just found it fascinating it is pretty hard hitting on the um, fishing industry and one thing I really respected was that the author um, just told the stories without any judgment so you're left to um have your own thoughts there uh however if you know it's, it's a little bit brutal in places is what i'm saying so if that bothers you again this might not be the book for you so then um the books that i have on the go right now this is so exciting i mean look at this deck and that's not even including the Aussie April read that I haven't started yet, but I will today. Uh, so I am still reading Fiebre Tropical. Uh, this one, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I haven't like dug back into it. I, I do know why, because I've just exploded with all these other reads and I'm trying to catch up on buddy reads. But this one, the first um, 50 pages I have found absolutely delightful i her writing is so funny uh, and i think it's going to get quite poignant as well from reading the dust jacket but um yeah again this one i have laughed out loud while reading it uh, it is not exactly heavy on the spanish but there's a lot more than you would usually see in um a book written in english and it's not your typical, here's a word, and then there's the context clue right after it. It's like legit bits of Spanish mixed in and you have to figure it out um, if you don't know Spanish. So yeah, but other than that, um, this book I have found delightful thus far, but I'm only 50 pages in. However, you know, 
a lot of books take 50 pages to get into the story. So the fact that I was into it immediately, I think, is a good sign. Um, continuing with the Spanish theme then, I just started Feast of the Goat by Mario Vargas Llosa. Is it Llosa? I think it is. I meant to ask Stephanie, but you know, I forgot. Anyway, I'm reading this with Stephanie from Time to Read and Patrice, um, Nobel Prize winning author here. So this one is focusing on the fall of Trujillo, the um, 31 year dictator of the Dominican Republic. I've only read the first two pages, two chapters. I've only read the first two chapters. Um, but the second chapter, I mean, the language in it, absolutely atrocious. Even worse than shit turd, I'm here to say. Um, really bad language. However, it is a dictator. Not that all dictators have bad language, but I don't know. Uh, but I do feel like in the second chapter, he encapsulated the personality and character of Trujillo so well like I don't I, I'm assuming but as a character he really described this character to me in that chapter and I thought it was a brilliant piece of writing even though like I said super bad language and super horrible person but you know um the first chapter I found a little boring honestly but the second chapter um even though I didn't exactly like it, I thought it was really well written. So I, I liked reading it, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, stay tuned for more thoughts and perhaps more coherent thoughts on that one. Um, I started a new audiobook, A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. This is the third in this trilogy. Obviously, Doris trilogy does have three. Anyway, this is the last one, and I have really, really enjoyed this series. I think the world building is great. Um, the characters, I'm so into the story. It's like, it's a, it's a triple crown winner, a trifecta, a trilogy, <laughs> no less. Um, but yeah, not much to say about it since it's the third, and um, yeah. Also, huh, I um, I started this one last night because I finished the other audiobook. So I finished two books in April. I finished book five in the Ravenel series, which is the Re Regency romance series that I've been reading with Heidi and Katie. And that one was, I don't know the name of it, but I loved it. It was, you know, the one about Wes, the reformed rake, who's become a farmer, and Phoebe, the lovely flaming-haired widow. Sorry. Ravenel's number five. That was great. Really great. The scene at the end where... Phoebe's dad talks to his future son-in-law. I mean, that's not a spoiler because in a romance, we all know that they get together in the end. But when the dad is talking to his future son-in-law before, you know, they're engaged, they don't know that they're son-in-laws yet. But, oh, you know, the reformed rake, talking to the reformed rake, it was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Anyway, I am also reading Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This is, um, I think this is Victorian, set in London, and it's a mystery. Um, Brady is the investigator, and she specializes in children that have been abducted because they have mysterious, unique abilities. So obviously um, there's a mermaid child in this one 
and yeah this is also um a difficult read like uh, these these two i'm having to really focus on them on the words this one just kids writing is just gorgeous on a sentence level i just you want to read every word and one thing that i really appreciated there are many things i'm appreciating about it but her research into the times and the way she writes that into her story you can tell that she's very knowledgeable but she doesn't info dumpy it so you don't have these chunks of this is what it's like in victorian london at the time um she she sprinkles them very elegantly throughout the text and i just i think she's a brilliant author this story i'm not quite sure yet if it's you know it's it's not himself yet himself was just charming from page one this one is taking a little more time to settle into but i still have high hopes because it's just kid um and then last but certainly not least my nonfiction read at the moment the invention of nature alexander von humboldt's new world by andrea wolf um i love nonfiction because you know the synopsis is always in the title uh, anyway, this is kind of a biography and a nature-focused book, obviously. I picked this up when I was on the West Coast last uh, summer. And um, I think, or did I pick it up at the Book 2 Prize meetup? Anyway, I wanted it because of going uh, to the West Coast. I went to visit my pen pal. Um, from when I was seven years old to now that I'd never actually met before and she lives in Humboldt County California so yeah and I didn't realize Humboldt was you know so profound um, but I think I'm really I love nature writing and so learning about a naturalist is definitely my thing so Stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk about these books again shortly because like I said, I think, I think I'm in the reading groove now. Um, again, thanks so much for watching and I will be back soon. Bye.